Good day everyone. So we are back again for the part 2 of our discussion on annuities. So for today we will be discussing naman yung tinatawag nating general ordinary annuity. But before that, take a look again on the objectives for this week and the content of this video. So, paano nga ba isusolve ang general ordinary annuity? So, bago natin siya isolve, kailangan muna natin malaman kung anong ibig sabihin ng general ordinary annuity. Remember that general annuities, ibig sabihin yan, magkaiba yung ating payment interval and interest period while ordinary annuity, ang bayad mo is on the end of each payment interval. So, pag pinagsama yon, ibig sabihin magkaiba yung ating interest period and payment interval with the payment at the end of each interval. General annuities have unequal payment intervals and interest period. Ayun nga yung sinabi ko kanina. The formula involving this annuity is same on what simple ordinary annuity has. Ibig sabihin, formulas na ginamit natin sa simple ordinary annuity is same sa gagamitin sa general ordinary annuity. Kaya lang, merong isang additional step. Ito yung pag-convert ng interest rate or interest period papunta sa equivalent na payment interval. So, magkaiba nga kasi yung kanilang payment interval at interest period. So, we need to convert para maging equivalent sila. Halimbawa, interest period mo monthly, pero ang bayad mo quarterly. So, yung monthly, we need to convert the monthly interest period into equivalent na quarterly para maging pareha sila before natin magamit yung formulas. So, future value of general ordinary annuity. So, same lang formula yan. Kagaya lang siya nung ginamit natin last time or last video. And, F is the future value. R is the regular payment. J is the interest rate per period pero subjected yan on R over N which is R is the interest rate and N is the number of compounding times per year. We have small p as the number of payments. The present value of general ordinary annuity is also same. We have P equals R times 1 minus 1 plus J raised to negative P over J. P is the present value. R is the regular payments. J is also the interest rate per period with R of interest rate and N of number of of compounding times per year. And again, small p with the number of payments. So, definitely the formulas are same for simple and general ordinary annuities. So, para ma-apply natin yung kaninang sinasabi ko na conversion of interest rate period into equivalent payment interval. So, let's apply this on a sample problem. So, let's move on. Sample problem number one. And Anton invested his money to an account that pays 6% compounded quarterly if he deposits 1,000 pesos at the end of each month. How much will be in the account after 15 years? So, break down natin yung problem. This is a general ordinary annuity. It is because of the payment interval na monthly is different from the interest period na quarterly. 
on the given problem, you can see that there is an equal interest period and payment interval, which is monthly and quarterly nga. The interest will grow quarterly, but the payment will be done every month. So, this is an example of general ordinary annuity. So, paano nga ba siya sinasolve? Siyempre, let's start with listing down the givens. So, the givens are, we have payment of 1,000 pesos, regular payments natin yan. We also have rate of 6% and this will be converted into decimal. That will be 0 0.06. You can just move the decimal places twice to the left or you can sometimes divide 6% by 100 and we will arrive at 0 0.06. We also have N of 4. Why do we have 4? Because the compound interest of the annuity payments will compound quarterly. So quarterly is equal to 4. That's why we have N of 4. P is 15 years. So, since siya ay magbabayad ng monthly, so that will be 15 times 12. That will be equal to 180 payments. So, we don't have J and F. So, dahil wala pa tayong payment interval and interest period na equal, kaya wala pa tayong J. Also looking for future value because according to the tense of our problem, naka future siya. So will be. How much the money will be or how much the amount will be. So let's move on the solution. Para sa first step ng ating solution, we need to convert the interest period into equivalent payment interval. So that will be quarterly papuntang monthly. So, paano ko convert yan? Ganito. So, from quarterly to monthly. So, kailangan lang natin i-equate yung formulas of compound interest ng monthly and quarterly. So, paano yun? Okay, kung mapapansin ninyo, ito ay ginamitan ng formula ng compound interest. Kasi, compound interest yung pinag-uusapan sa problem. So, para sa mga nakalimot ng formula ng compound interest, ito siya. So, balik sa ating problem. Pinalitan ko na dito yung ating N. So, pag monthly, 12. Kapag quarterly is 4. Pagkatapos nun, input the interest on the quarterly because it is on the given of the problem. So, sa quarterly lang tayo mag input dito sa may R. And that will be 0.06. So, pagkatapos, kailangan na nating i-remove lahat ng same variables such as P and T. Pag sinabing remove, tanggalin mo lang. Pero ang totoo niyan, ini-eliminate natin yan by some mathematical processes. Pero para mas madali lang, kailangan lang natin siyang i-remove. So, we will remove P and T. So, that will be 1 plus R over 12 na lang raised to 12 and equals to 1 plus 0 0.06 over 4 raised to 4. Tapos, kailangan mong isolve yung R over 12. Kasi nga, yun yung kailangan nating J. Remember that J is R over N. So, yung N natin is 12. So, yun yung kailangan natin. R over 12. So, para makuha yan, kailangan mo ngayong hanapin yung 12th root of both sides. Para ma-remove natin yung 12 sa kabila. So, that will be like this. And then, ikakancel lang yung 12. So, dahil na-cancel na, ito na lang yung matitira. After that, kailangan mo na ngayong gamitan ng calculator para makuha natin yung exact value on the right side. Kapag gumamit ka ng calculator, 
ang makukuha mo is 1.00497. Now, papaano kung wala kang scientific calculator? You can download calculator apps that is capable of writing this whole expression, yung 12th root of 1 plus 0.06 over 4 raised to 4, like Photomath or MathPapa or GeoGebra or Symbolab calculators. Ngayon, if you want naman to solve this step by step, you can also do that. But remember that, do not round off doon sa mga decimal ng solutions. Like, 0.06 divided by 4, tapos ira-round off mo yung sagot. That's not advisable to do. It is because a mere simple decimal place na nawala sa ating expressions, that will mean a lot doon sa ating solution. Kasi, we are talking about exponent. Ang exponent kasi, kahit decimal lang yan, kapag nilagyan mo ng exponent, it will boom up. Ibig sabihin, lalawak agad yan ng biglaan. So, kapag may tinanggal ka or nag-round off ka, definitely may mababago sa final answer. Now, it is not advisable, pero hindi naman sinasabing mali yun. You can also do that, pero make sure na you will copy as much as possible na decimal places. Kung mga 5 places lang, sige, ilagay mo siya ng buo sa solution. If mga 3, 2, 5, 6, 7 decimal places or 10 decimal places, kopyahin mo. Pero kapag ka naging non-terminating decimal siya, like, walang katapusan yung decimal, hindi na kaya ng calculator mo, ilista lahat ng possible values, that's the time that you can round off sa solutions mo. Well, anyway, I used calculator to solve this right side ng expressions natin. That's the 12th root of 1 plus 0 0.06 over 4 raised to 4, and that becomes 1.00497. So, since we are looking for R over 12 only, kailangan na nating i-transpose yung ating 1. So, pag transpose mo yan, magiging ganito. And, after mo siyang i-transpose, syempre, i-simplify. That will be 1.00497 minus 1 or 0 0.00 497. And this will be our J. Kung napansin ninyo, hindi na natin gagamitin yung R over N because it is already on R over N form. That is R over 12. We don't need the R anymore kasi nga meron tayong exact value of the J. So the J will be 0 0.00497. After that, you can now solve the problem. So, since we have complete values na on our formulas, we can now substitute everything on the formula. So, we are looking for the future value, then use the future value formula. Remember that this is also the formula being used for simple ordinary annuity. So, substitute. And you can use calculator to solve. Again, kung walang calculator, you can solve this step by step but make sure i minimize yung pagra-round off ng mga decimal places. So, kapag ka ginamit ko yung calculator to solve this, this will result to 290,076.28. At ito daw ang magiging amount ng account ni Anton. And that's how you solve general ordinary annuity.